Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Old School Bike Reviews. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the 2011 Scott Voltage Freeride. This was a major upgrade from the sketch wagon that was my previous bike, the Banshee Wildcard. This had legit suspension on it, uh, good parts, and the frame itself was a step in the right direction. It was really good at what it was intended to do, which was be a free ride bike, and I progressed a ton on it and had a great time. And there's quite a few fun moments and big moments in my riding career that happened on this bike. So really excited to talk about it. Let's get into it. So coming off my previous bike, all I'd really ridden is some really old school free ride bikes. Uh, this is still like old school by today's standards, but at the time this was a fairly modern bike. I think it was still like a current generation bike. So that was a huge step for me and it had current generation parts. So the performance, the reliability, and the confidence that I got from all that was definitely a huge upgrade. And I found this thing on Pink Bike, I think for $1,500, which was a smoking deal. A limited edition colorway with purple pivot bolts. It was built up with X Fusion suspension, uh, the Vector HLR air shock, which is one of the only downhill air shocks on the market at the time. So that was cool. The Vengeance fork um, had Synchros wheels, Saint brakes, and an X9 nine speed drivetrain. And that was a pretty solid build for the time. So this bike was super unique in how adjustable it was. You could change the dropouts to change your chainstay length. There were multiple different shock mounts to adjust the travel and the geometry of the bike itself. So you could do a ton of different things and really play with this bike. But I always had it in the free ride mode or just the longer travel option. I think with the mid chainstay, uh, the geometry on this bike is still old and short and weird uh, for today's standards, but compared to what I was on, it was definitely a step in the right direction. I think it had a 65 degree head angle, which is fairly slack, you know, slack enough. Um, anything steeper than that, things start to get weird if your intention is to go fast downhill, but 65 is a solid number. The reach was definitely short. We're into the 400s, it's 404 millimeters for the long frame. It only came in two sizes, a long and a short. And it's just funny, yeah, the, the largest size is uh, basically a 400 mil reach. So still a really tiny bike, but just having that slacker head angle um, and you know, even at 400 mils, it's a longer reach than what I was on. I think they were like 380. So just there's quite a bit more wheelbase um, on the bike and more travel. The suspension actually worked. Uh, it wasn't anything crazy advanced. It was just a single pivot design uh, just with a shock that worked. So that was a step in the right direction. And uh, yeah, I ended up having a really fun time on this bike. Um, it was definitely the bike where I feel like my progression curve was the steepest. Uh, once I got that feeling of how the bike worked, I was really able to just let off the brakes. And at that point, that's where a lot of my progression came was just from letting off the brakes and letting the bike do the work. Um, and once you get that feeling, uh, yeah, a lot of confidence comes with it. So I was definitely having my fair share of scary moments, but was able to definitely progress my riding super quick. So I was like just over 15 at the time, maybe 16 and I was in full send mode. I was just like wanting to hit the biggest jumps I could. And I think that's perfectly encapsulated in one of my first legitimate videos. It's called Free Ride Never Dies. Again, me and my friends were just so into this free ride thing. And yeah, we saw like, I don't know, the scene dying and we wanted to keep it alive. So we created this epic video with this awesome Van Halen song. And it's just me like, pushing my riding to the limit, honestly. It took us like four months to film in the dead of summer, uh, most of it. And I was just like pushing so hard, sending stuff for the first time for the clip. And to this day, I'm really proud of it. I hit some big jumps, built some really cool sections of trail, and I pulled off a video that I'm proud of to this day. And that was just like such a steep progression curve during that time. Uh, my filmer drew must have had a ton of patience 
um, because I was screwing stuff up constantly, but we both stuck through it to get the shots we wanted. And yeah, in the end, it's a, it's a really awesome video. And at the end, there's this massive road gap. It's something that to this day, like I'm not messing with that thing anytime soon. I've hit it enough times where I don't really need to hit it again. And yeah, it's like a 40 or 50 foot road gap over this massive cutout fire road. And yeah, I remember like coming up short the first time I had some really nasty crashes on it. I blew out my shock, then it bucked me the next time, but I was finally able to get it clean. Even got a little bar turn in there. Yeah, just like real, real sender days in a perfect bike to uh, to do that all on. It was actually ridiculous, like me and my best friend Drew and Arvond, who was like the core riding group at the time, we all had Scott voltages at the same time with like different builds. Arvond had a dual crown on his. Drew had like a totally shrammed out Lyric and mine was like X-Fusion and stuff. So uh, it's just like so funny that we all had like matching bikes. It was kind of kind of goofy, but they were all perfect for what we were trying to do on them, which was build jumps, hit jumps and go send stuff. So it was, it was awesome. But while I had this bike, I was constantly upgrading it. And even through the video of, you know, free ride never dies, you can see parts change and shots go back and forth and I have a different fork or different bars or different wheels. But I think it was the first time where I started to upgrade parts and I was able to really feel the differences in between stuff. Um, I definitely made some mistakes. The biggest one was going to a super flat anodized purple 800 mil wide race face downhill bar. Uh, what I took off was some like riser bar. I think there were sun lines that were like 760, like kind of narrower. With the 160 X-Fusion fork, the front end was already pretty low. But once I put those bars on, like just being wider pulled me more forward and I lost a lot of rise. So I was kind of confused why the handling of the bike changed and kind of sucked after that. But looking back now, it was clear because I just put those stupid purple bars on and putting Anno purple bars is like such a teenager move. Like it's just classic and definitely it was a mistake with the build of that bike but it got better once I put a Fox Van 180 RC2 on there. It was just the coil 180 mil uh, Fox 36. And that fork was butter. Like that changed that bike. And to this day, I would love to ride one cause that's gotta be one of the best feeling forks I've ever put on a bike. Um, just so buttery smooth, tons of travel and that was like a dream to ride and the bike looks so sweet with it the x-fusion vector air out back was definitely a cool shock the only one of one of the only air downhill shocks at the time uh, by that time i was done with it it was completely blown out it didn't really have a ton of small bump sensitivity but it had a lot of support um and just the air shock feel feels really good for hitting jumps so it was pretty good for that bike and it held it together enough to be like usable on like chattery downhill stuff, but that definitely wasn't its strength. And it was nice having good Saint brakes, the X9 drivetrain. I had like X9 nine speed stuff for just years, like on my first three or four bikes, that's all, that's all I ran. So worked flawlessly enough, big cranks, uh, I also upgraded the wheels to Mavic 729s. This was a badass wheel set. I think it was the same rim as the D-Maxes, which were really popular, just with regular J-Bend spokes, but uh, they had 29 mil internal width, which was really wide at the time, but is kind of the industry standard now. And yeah, I could just tell like immediately that wheel set felt super solid. It got hand built at a local shop with brass nipples and it was just properly done. So I just remember that wheel set being super sick. And by the time I had to sell that bike, it had that sweet wheel set on it, the Kashima 180 mil fork. Um, and I just had that thing pretty dialed in. Like, yeah, looking back on it, I'm like, that's a sick bike. So that's the Scott Voltage. Uh, my first, I think, good bike. That, that bike I look back on and I'm like, that thing was solid. Um, riding it today, I'm sure it would be pretty small and scary, but I'm sure I would have an awesome time on it. And it was perfect for where I was at in my riding.
So that's it for this video. Uh, the next one, I'm gonna talk about the Noli Endorphin. Uh, that was like my first real trail bike. And yeah, we start getting away from the free ride bikes and then I go into trail bikes and downhill bikes. So anyway, lots more old school bike reviews coming. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. Subscribe if you'd like. I'll see you guys next time.